Hey, I'm Tom. Marquita's behind the camera. We are destined to explore and today we want to do a little review of the Hollywood RV rider bike rack that we recently purchased. Um, we're going to show you what we really love about the rack and we're going to show you the big problem that we had and uh, what we did to fix it. So uh, let's go around to the back and take a look and see what we got. I'm not going to go through the whole assembly of the bike rack, um, but I wanna, what I want to show you is how we mounted on the RV, um, how we get the bikes on there, and um, how we address some little issues we had. Um, first thing I want to just point out to you is the back of our rig is completely flat. Um, our hitch um, extends beyond the rig just a little less than two inches, maybe an inch and three quarters. Um, this is kind of important because when you get to the dimensions of the rig, the rack and how it all goes together, that's kind of important. Hollywood says that you need to have a minimum of two inches from the center of the pinhole to the front of the hitch here and we've got probably two and a quarter inches. And the other um, dimension that I want to just point out here is the dimension from this hole to the beam that we're mounted on back here. So that's about three and a half inches. Um, one of the big concerns that I had in buying this rack was when we had our old rack on the rig and tried to put that on there, the extension of that rack was much longer and it wouldn't fit in that hole far enough to get that pin in there. And so that was one thing that I was really concerned about here. This is about three inches to that hole, to the center of the hole. So if you've got more than three inches behind that hole, um, to the center of that hole, you should be plenty good as far as fitting it into the rack. So we're going to go ahead and lift this in here. Oh, one, one, one other item that I want to point out on the, on the rack here too is there's this kind of collar around the outside of this rack. This is really important for um, the mounting of the rack and we'll get into that in just one second. So we're going to slide this in here and then I'll show you how the rest of it goes together. So as far as the installation onto the RV, there's a long threaded bolt here uh, with a washer and lock nut on it, or lock washer. Um, it's just a three quarter inch head. So I'm just going to run that in um, to there. There is a um, lock that goes on the other side. The key for this lock is the same key um, that fits all the knobs on the rack too. Uh, so that's kind of convenient. I'm not going to put that on right this second because we're not going to leave it mounted. And then the other piece here that's really important is this stabilizer U-bolt. Um, I'm not sure exactly the terminology for that. So the easiest way to put this U-bolt uh, on is to have it on the receiver here before you slide it in. So you don't have to take this all apart, it's just a washer on the bottom, a nut, a lock washer, and a nut. So the way that you want you to do this is to put this underneath the receiver, mount this down, and then we're just going to tighten these up on here. And once you do that, this rack really becomes rock solid in there and the rack doesn't move around at all. So that's really a, really a nice feature of this is to have that really locked down nice and tight so that nothing's moving on you and uh, um, the rack's not flopping around. So if you want to put this rack into more of a storage position, again I mentioned that this, this piece will um, tip down the bolt back through here. And then what you would do is you would take this bolt assembly out of here. And then the rack will tip up and store in this position and you can put just, just put this bolt back right in. So it's easy to fold this up and get a little more compact on the back of the trailer. So we're going to go ahead and load a bike up here. The way we do that is we just basically roll it in from one end. You can tip this arm down, but I like to have the bike so that the gears are on the outside. And when I do that, and the bike is on here and pedals and things, I can't get the arm back up. So we just leave the arm up when we put it on, and uh, we'll get the bike on there, and then we'll show you the couple other features here. So if you're wondering if your bike is going to fit with the standard setup, um, again, when you think about the, the, the flat back that I've got here and the small extension we've got on the back, um, when I measure across um, from the center of this rack, you've got about 11 inches here. So if your handlebars were 
more than about 20 inches wide, which most handlebars are, you're probably going to run into a clearance problem on the back of this rack without doing some kind of modification on this um, clamp assembly here to give yourself more space. All right, so we've got the bike on the rack, and what happens is these clamps will clamp onto the bar, and this is the problem that we're having here. So as you can see, as we bring this clamp down, the bike handlebars are pressed up against the back of the RV, and I cannot get um, the clamp. I mean, I'm off by at least a couple of inches here as far as getting it on here. Now this is a rack, it's called the RV Rider. It's designed for RVs. So I would think that they would provide adequate space um, for this to mount. Again, my receiver is a couple of inches out past the end of the trailer. So we've got uh, additional clearance there. So this is a problem. So I did call Hollywood Racks, um, told them that the problem that I was having so their solution is to sell um, basically a receiver that will extend this rack out another seven inches. A couple of issues I have with that is one, that receiver extender is another $120 on top of the $599 price for the rack. So now we're up to um, basically $720 for an RV rack. So I wasn't very happy with that um, solution um, and I did expre express my displeasure with them. The other, the other reason I don't want it out farther is the farther out you do it, obviously it's the longer that you make the RV and it also um, puts additional stress on the rack and things like that. So had they just made that receiver um, a couple more, couple inches longer, um, everything probably would have been fine. So I'll show you the modification that I did here. So this is the, this is the clamp assembly that they provide. There's a, a, basically a spacer piece in here that's about this long. The rack did come with some additional spacers that were much longer than this, which I don't know why you would need one of those, but it did come with those. So what I did was I took one of those additional spacers that they had and I cut it way down. Basically just chopped it off and you can see I've only got um, probably less than a quarter of an inch of this out here, long enough for that um, clamp to fit on there. So when I've got um, the short clamp on here now, now I can bring it down and I can clamp this in. I can clamp this in as you can see now I have several inches of space up here and because this rack is really rigid I'm confident that we're not going to be smashing the back of the RV so that resolves the design flaw that I see in this rack um, and allows me to get you know the the same distance out not having to have an extra receiver and clamps and extra locks down there so that um, kind of solves that problem one other one other note that I'll just make here that we're having just a slight issue with is um, it's really easy to extend this especially with our wider tubes out far enough that the that the knob comes off and it's a little difficult getting the knob back on there again without an extra pair of hands without an extra pair of hands so what I may do is I might actually just trim this um, tube down a little bit too, just to give myself just a little bit more bolt there. So let's just talk about the rack a little bit. The rack is designed for e-bikes up to 80 pounds. Our bikes are about 50 pounds with the battery. And of course, um, anytime you're transporting the bike, you're gonna wanna take the batteries out. Um, you're gonna wanna take any extra locks off or any other things that you know aren't permanently attached to the bike so that you keep the weight as low as possible. So. With all, all that weight, we're at about 40 pounds, so we should be plenty good on the rack. The rack is built super super solid. It is still moving a little bit because I didn't clamp that down all of it, but the rack, the rack is built so, super solid. It has the, the hoops here. It has the hoops here to go through each, um, each wheel that you can cinch these down so it's really nice and snug in there in the, both the front and the rear. Again, you've got the clamp that holds it really nice and tight. So in summary, there are some design changes that would have made the rack better um, than it is that I wish they would have incorporated. Maybe in a future design they'll do that. But overall, we are really happy with the rack and how solid it is on the back of the RV.